your day of salvation Can you hear the Lord's voice? Today is the day of salvation Can you hear the Lord's voice? Today is the day of salvation Can you hear the Lord's voice? Did the Lord has sent these last days to preach is all the untreated word of God, the truth that can set you free from sin. A lot of you go to churches, we call them so-called churches. We call them also their man-made religions in the world today. And we're saying that you're not going to be saved in false religion. You're only going to be saved from your sins as you abide in the true faith and the fellowship in the church of the living God. That's the only way you're going to be you know God and the only way you're going to be saved. You only have to receive the truth from the brethren, the true church of God, that you might know God, you might know His will, that you might be saved today. I'm telling you, the many brothers, you, I know that a lot of you are confused. A lot of you truly haven't heard the truth being preached like you're going to be hearing today. We'd like to go to the book of uh, Isaiah. It speaks about as a way that the Lord has prepared for his people. And that way of holiness. A lot of you don't believe you have to be holy and live holy to know God and to be saved. We're saying that that's the only way. Lord said, hold this without, no man shall see the Lord. We're saying you're not going to be able to see God's face in peace today unless you living and have been living holy when you leave this world. You leave this world today, have not lived holy and godly in this world, you're going to meet an angry God. And he's going to judge you for your sins and cast you into hell and the lake of fire that burns with fire and brimstone. But we're here today to tell you there's a way out. Christ prepared a way. the wrath of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Lord, very angry with the sinner every day. Don't be deceived. Don't think you are right in your sins today. God is angry every day at your sins. And he's going to judge you one day for those sins today. We say God has prepared a way that you can escape his wrath. And the only way that it's going to be, you have to be born again. Truly abide in the faith of Jesus Christ today. We say believe in Jesus Christ. Believe in this gospel that can set you free from sin today. The book of Isaiah was telling, was saying that there's a way, and that way is a way of holiness. 
our dreams shall not pass over you. We saying if you still in sin, you're unclean before God today. You can't know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You can't enter into the kingdom of God unclean. If you still fornicate, sex outside of marriage, if you divorce your wife and marry another, you're in adultery today. If you're in homosexuality, that's uncleanness. If you're still in this uncleanness, all that lasciviousness and lust of your flesh, you're unclean. And we're saying God is not going to let you enter his kingdom being unclean. You're going to have to be clean. You're going to have to live a life free from all sin to enter into God's kingdom. A lot of churches tell you you are right in your sins of adultery. You put away your first wife, wife or husband and married another. We're here to tell you don't be deceived like that. Men is out here deceiving today in these religions in the world today. Tell people they're all right in their sins, in their uh, works of the press like that. But God is not fooled or deceived or mocked. If you sow into the flesh like that, you shall of your flesh be corruption. We're saying, come and learn how to sow to the Spirit today. That you might leap, reap life, and that life everlasting. What of God tells us in Matthew chapter 7, that you got to enter you in at the Lord's straight gate, a way that leading unto life. And only a few people is going to be able to find that way. A lot of you might not understand that. God is only going to save a few. Because so many today don't really want to give up their life in this world. They don't want to give up sin. And we're here to tell you that know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. If you're not righteous, you can't go to God's heaven or kingdom. The only the righteous can inherit God's kingdom. Don't be deceived today. God is not mocked if you sowing or continue to live a life in sin today. You shall reap corruption in your life. The book of Matthew tells us to enter you in at the straight gate. The brother has received that way, that truth and that life. That straight way that leads them to life. And only a few people is going to be able to find that one. We are here searching for those people, hoping you can hear today that you can come to the light, the true light that's now shining in the world today. Book of Matthew chapter 7 verses 13 says, Enter you in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads unto life. Thank you, Jesus. Broad is the way that leads unto destruction, and many there be that go in therein. Many are going in the way of destruction. Many are on their way to hell today. Why? Because of the deception, because of so many different religions that have been established by man today. You have the Catholic, the Seventh-day Adventist, the Baptist, the Lutheran, and Methodist, so, so many have been established in the world today. We're here to tell you that they're not of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They've been man-made. It's only one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. If you read your Bibles, you'll never read about Catholicism, I mean, you know, that you can have a Baptist religion or all these Lutherans and different religions today. There's only one faith, and you have to believe in the faith of Jesus Christ. 
we say, because straight is the gate. So many don't want to go in that straight way. Lord has set a straight way. And that's the way of holiness today that we're saying today. So many don't want to truly go in that way of holiness and sanctification. But Lord is looking for all of them that want to humble themselves today. Lord said, humble yourself as a little child. That's the only way. Except you humble yourself like a little child. You in no case can enter into the kingdom of God. Proud spirits, man spirits, proud and hard against God, can't enter into that way today. Lord said he had prepared that way of humility today, humbleness, like a little child. We saying come have fellowship with the body of Jesus Christ today. A straight way that leads to life. That way that you have to abide in God's sanctification without sin today. Living holy and godly in this present world. In Titus chapter 2, I mean chapter uh, 2 shows us that. Let's we'll look at that right quick. In the book of Titus, chapter 2, it speaks about today that true grace of God that brings salvation. Have taught us and we're teaching, telling you today to deny, can you be able to deny ungodliness and worldly lust? We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world today. I don't know what your preacher have told you. That's all right. You can sit a little bit. You don't really have to be that holy. But don't be deceived today. You're going to have to be holy today. In your life, godliness and sanctification has to be there. You can't live the way you want to live and inherit the kingdom of God. You can't do that. God is holy, and the only way you're going to be able to see Him, you're going to have to be holy also. That's the only way today. God is not going to let you be in sin, live the way you want to live in sin, and enter into His kingdom. I'm trying to let you know in a plain way today, the Word of God is showing us here. Except you're living righteously, and godly in this present world while you be on the earth. Not when you die, it's too late. A lot of preachers tell people, well, you can do that when you, you can live holy when you die. You can't, it's too late then. The day is the day of salvation. The day you need to walk in God's holiness today. In this present world, looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ today who gave himself, God gave his life for us. He laid down his life that we have life to do. That he might redeem us and to purify him himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. I'm telling you today, this is the Lord's love today. Can you come? and find the way to life today. The only way you're going to live unto the Lord, the Lord in eternal life and have that life eternal except you come this way today and find that way that Christ has shown us today. We say here back in Matthew chapter 7, only a few that be that find that way today. Are you willing to humble yourself? Are you willing to understand, beware of false prophets? It's so many to do. We're saying beware. They come to you and seek glory. But inwardly, they are rather than you. We're saying today, you should know them there by your fruits. Lord saying there's fruits 
should be a what? Love and joy, godliness and sanctification. Galatians chapter 5 brings that out. In the book of Galatians chapter 5. We have to look at that also. Lord saying the works of the flesh are made manifest to me. Which are these? Adultery is manifest in the world today. And I'm sure in, in a lot of your lives. Uh, the word of God is saying fornication is manifest. Uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry. The Lord is not going to let people that is in idolatry into his kingdom. If you're in witchcraft, if you're hating your neighbor, you can't hate your neighbor. You got hatred in your heart. You can't enter into God's kingdom. Only the love of God. Only God's love in your life. Envy, strife, murder, drunkenness, reveling, and such like of which I tell you, time past, that days that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Shall not. We hear the team stop being the seed. If you still in these works, you can't inherit the God's kingdom. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, goodness, and faith. And we sing against us there is no law. And they that the Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections of our lives. We sing today, if you really want to crucify these, these things that's in your life today, you got to be born again. You got to hear the burden today that you might know the truth and the truth shall set you free today. Thank you, Jesus Christ. What did God say in the book of Matthew chapter 7? Just because you go to church and sing, Lord, Lord, are you praying? So enter to the kingdom of heaven. But you got to be doing God's will. If you're not doing the will of God, you shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Many will say in that day, when the Lord comes to judge all of us. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in that? Did we preach? Did we cast out devils and do many, many wonderful works? But the whole problem with, the, with so many today, they want to still try to know God in sin. You want to still be a fornicator. You still want to commit adultery. And then you want to go to church. We here to tell you to don't be deceived like that. If you still in iniquity, God said, I never knew you. That's what he's going to tell so many. And when they're facing God on, a, on their day of judgment. We all going to be judged one day. Don't be deceived about that. We all going to be judged for what we've done in our lives. Whether it been good or whether it been evil. Or the books are going to be open one day. God is writing down or he's putting down some kind of way by the grace of God. What you've done in your life. And it's going to bring it right back to you. And it's going to show you your life. We're saying you need your life to be in Christ today. You want to have God to tell you well done, thou good and faithful servant. Christ is the way, the truth, and the life today. And many can come that way today. No man is going to be able to go unto him except they come through Christ's way today. We trust in the living God, we come to tell you today it's a better way. Their way is the way of holiness. Uncleanness is not going to make it. The sinner is not going to enter into the kingdom of God. 
Only if you've been living holy and godly while you was here on the earth. But we can hear Satan today. Come and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Repent of all your sins. Being baptized in God's name today. In Jesus' name, we hope and pray today. Your faithful little brethren to speak. Amen. Amen, men and brethren. We are Church of the Living God. We're in your community today speaking the word of God as it was delivered unto us by a true man of God so that those at the sound of our voice that might hear these words just understand and know today, men and brethren, that you can be saved from your sins. We're saying there has been many false prophets that has come into the world today, many false churches. You have the Catholic Church, the Baptist Church, Episcopalian, Seventh-day Adventist, Buddhist, Buddhism, Sikhism, all these different man-made religions. Men and brethren, we want to turn your attention to the Word of God in 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 1. It says, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord, that brought and bring upon themselves swift destruction. We're telling you today, men and brethren, we're here in your community today with a warning. This is a warning, men and brethren. We're warning you to turn from your sins. Verses 2 says, Many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. So many people nowadays want to speak against religion. They want to speak against the truth. But we're saying true religion, when you hear a true man of God, he'll be telling you to come out of your sins. He'll be telling you to repent and change your life before it's too late. True men of God are not asking you for any money today. True soldiers of Jesus Christ are going to come out bearing witness and warning you of the signs and the times. The scripture tells us in verses 3 about the false prophet. It says, They through covetousness shall with feigned words make merchandise of the people and their judgment now for a long time lingereth not their damnation slumbereth not for God spared not angels that sin and cast them down into hell and delivered them unto chains of darkness to be reserved to judgment how will God spare you? We're telling you today, men and brethren, that there's going to be a day when you die. You're going to have to wake up and give an account for the things that you've done in your life. And we're telling you today that it would be better for you to hear these words today, men and brethren. And humble yourself. We're telling you that all these false prophets all they'll do is try to make merchandise of the people. We're telling you the true men of God. We're going to be begging you. We're going to implore you to turn from sin. St. John, chapter 10, verses 1. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entered in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. We're telling you today, men and brethren, 
the sheep of God will hear the voice of God and won't turn away. The scripture says, he goeth before them, the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger, a strange voice will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. We're telling you today, men and brethren, if you be the true sheep of God, change your life. Humble yourself and understand that the sheep of God are obedient to the word of God. The scripture says, a stranger's voice will the sheep not listen to you. So we're telling you today that there are many strange voices in the world. They like to preach for money. They like to preach for a good time and try to sing and dance in the church. But we're telling you today that they don't understand the true gospel of Jesus Christ. They don't understand this doctrine and they cannot deliver it unto the people. The scripture says, let's go ahead to 1 Corinthians chapter 9 or chapter 6 verses 9. It says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. We're telling you today, men and brethren, these works shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The scripture plainly states, these evil works and acts are not of God. Neither thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortionists shall inherit the kingdom of God. We're telling you today, men and brethren, turn from your sins. Humble yourself and repent while there's still time. You might think I'm all right today. I've got years and years of my life ahead of me. But we're saying that you should consider this word in these last days and don't harden your heart. You might think you have a long time on this earth, but we're telling you today, men and brother, life is short. And you don't want to wake up in front of an angry God. The scripture says in Colossians chapter 3, verses 1, it says, if ye be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above and not on things of this earth. We're telling you today, men and brothers, so many, they believe that they're living a good life if they have a new car. They're living a good life if they have a new house. But we're telling you today, life is not about new things. You got to get your life right with God before it's too late. And it's very important. You have to prepare for your death and get your life right. It says, for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Verses 5 says, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. That means constrain yourself. Constrain your members and keep yourself away from this, what the scripture says. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, fornication uncleanliness, inordinate, inordinate affection, evil concupiscences, covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh upon the children of disobedience. We're telling you today, the scripture says, don't fall into idolatry. So many people want to worship a day, a holiday, a Christmas day, a New Year's day. We're telling you today, don't be so caught up and preoccupied with the day. We're telling you today that you have to repent today. That's what's important. 
turning from sin today and not living another day to the lust of your flesh and the desires of the devil. It says, but now ye also put, up, put off all these things, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. And saying, put these things away. Verses 9 says, lie not one to another, seeing that ye should put off the whole man with his deeds. We're telling you today, men and brethren, that you have to be baptized into the true gospel of Jesus Christ. And put off your old man, put off your old life, your no good flesh. You have to crucify that flesh and put it away and become a new creature in Christ Jesus. The new man is going to put off all the works of the flesh and he'll follow the voice of the shepherd even as we showed you in St. John chapter 10. The sheep will hear God's voice and God's voice will we follow. We're telling you men and brethren, don't follow a stranger's voice today. Don't follow the voice of the devil who wants to tell you to smoke cigarettes, who wants to tell you to commit adultery with your neighbor's wife. The devil, how he wants to get you involved in more sin and more iniquity. We're saying don't follow that strange voice. We're saying it's important today, men and brethren, that you follow the voice of the shepherd. It says Luke chapter 9, verses 23, he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. We will tell you today, men and brethren, don't try to save your life in this world. You're just going to lose it. Man is only given a certain number of days on this earth. And then you're going to pass away and die. We're telling you today, the Word of God says, Whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. It says, For what is a man advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? We're telling you today, men and brethren, like we said earlier, it don't matter how many nice cars you have. It don't matter how many nice houses you have. Some people think that they made it if they have a trophy wife. But we're telling you today, men and brethren, that all these things of this world are going to pass away. The cars are going to rust. The houses are going to get old and fall apart. Even men themselves, you start to have aches and pains and sicknesses and you start to get old. We're saying don't put your stock in this life because it's going to pass away. But the scripture says that whosoever will lose his life, lose his life for my sake, the sake of Jesus today, doing the work of God, it says the same shall save it. It says, verses 26, whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, Son of man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in his father's and that of the holy angels. We're telling you today, men and brethren, you only have a limited amount of time on this earth. Use your time wisely. First John shows you that if you in sin today, you don't know God. And we're telling you today. Receive this word and go heart of your hearts, men and brother. First John chapter 4, verses 1. It says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world today. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And we're telling you today, when you receive Jesus Christ in your flesh today, you won't sin anymore. 
There will be no need for you to go commit adultery on your wife. There won't be any need for you to steal from your neighbor. There won't be any need for you to rob or try to kill your neighbor. Because you come into a new life, one with promise. We're telling you today, it says every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is coming to flesh is not of God. This is that spirit of Antichrist. Where have you have heard that it should come, and even now, already, is in the world. We're telling you today, men and brethren, don't have a spirit against Christ today. Don't have a spirit where you resist against the ministers of God today. We're saying, let that word go into your heart today. We're saying, reason among yourselves whether the things we say is true. Men and brethren, to you today. You should be able to understand that, that we're not here for money. We're not here for any of your goods. But we're here for your salvation and well-being. We're here calling you out of sin and iniquity today and warning you to repent before it's too late. That's what the true ministers of God is going to be doing. We're going to be warning you to turn from sin. Warning you to humble yourself before Almighty God. Men and brethren, we hope that you can hear these words. And if you have any questions, we invite you to come forth. We have plenty of ministers here that can speak with you. That might be able to help you with any questions you might have. So that you can better understand this warning. That you can better understand the reason we are out here today. Men and brethren, we understand why we're out here on your street corner. We're not just speaking these words in vain, men and brethren. We understand what we've been sent by God to do. And that is to warn you of the wrath to come. So that you might humble yourself and escape this wrath to come. Amen, men and brethren. Amen. I thank our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for that good word that you heard today. And just as Minister John Paul was telling you, we're here to warn you about the wrath to come. Even as you heard the minister saying, you only have so many, as they say, good years in the earth in these last days. The word God says, it is appointed unto men once to die, but after that, the judgment. And what we're doing, if we're preaching unto you, God's truth and His divine plan of salvation so that you might make an intelligent decision on where you're going to spend your eternity. What God says is appointed unto men once to die. You only get one time at that, at this life. You only get one time to prove that you truly love God and that you appreciate the sacrifice that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did on the cross for you for dying for your sins and suffering an agonizing death for your iniquities. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was indeed the Son of the living God. And he allowed men to spit upon him, to bruise him, to nail him hand and foot on the cross so that he might shed his holy and righteous blood for your sins. I'm telling you, men, brethren, and in these last days, Jesus is commanding each and every one of us to repent of our sins to turn from all of our iniquities that you don't have to have a purpose that you might escape the judgment that the Lord is going to put on the sinner and on the false prophet and on the devil in the last day. Your purpose in life should not be as you heard the minister saying, how much money you can accumulate in this earth. How many cars you can get. 
how big your house can be, or how pretty your wife can be, how handsome your husband can be. That's not should, that should not be your life purpose in this world. Your purpose in these last days should be how you can escape God's judgment, how you can escape God's wrath, how you can turn from all your sins and find a true church, how you can find true men of God in these last days, men chosen by God, sent by God, speaking God's word and not their own. I'm telling you, we're here to clear up any confusion you might have about religion. Any confusion you might have. I know there's a lot of people calling themselves Christians in these last days. I know there's a lot of faiths and denominations and people are saying they're the church of God in these last days. But how would you know God's one true religion. How would you know God's one true church, which is his body? I hear the word of God telling us in Ephesians chapter 4, in verse 5, there's only one faith. You see? There's only one Lord. There's not many lords and many faiths. Contrary to what you heard in false religion, there is not many roads that lead to God. We're telling you, in the name of Jesus Christ, Christ only recognizes one true faith, one true church in these last days. That church is the body of Jesus Christ. It's flesh of his flesh, bone of his bone. That church is indeed without sin. What God says, be ye therefore holy, even as your Father in heaven is holy. Be you therefore righteous, even as your Father in heaven is righteous. Be you therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. I hear the word of God tell us in Revelation, he that is filthy, let him be filthy still. But he that is holy, let him be holy still. We're telling you, men and brethren, God only has one body. God only has one true church. And that church is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Search the scriptures, men and brethren. You won't find Catholic in the scriptures. You will not find Baptist, Lutheran, or Presbyterian, or Methodist in the Bible, in the scriptures. You're only going to find God's body, his church, which is church of the living God in the book of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 15. We're telling men and brethren, God's church is without sin. What God tells me in 1 John, chapter 3, and verse 6, if you're in sin, you don't know God. And God don't know you. We're telling you, Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21, Jesus says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter to the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not done many wonderful works? Lord, I paid my tithes. Lord, I fasted. Lord, I gave and helped the poor. But Jesus is going to say, in that last day, I never knew you. If you're in sin, Jesus said, I never knew you. If you're in sin, this is what I'm saying, dear brethren. If you're in sin, Jesus says, in St. Matthew, Chapter 7, verse 21 through 23. I never knew you. This is why it's important, men and brethren, to understand. You cannot do this. This is private property. Yes, ma'am. 